the warriors Changing our world day by day The way of the thrift of warriors Can't rely on the bank, there's no way Good morning, good morning, BigSquareRoadRoad.com. What's your morning, Hornets? Here's your sip of chaga coffee, even on the road. Uh, this is my Transwest Truck Trailer RV coffee holder. This thing keeps coffee hot forever. All right, tonight's show number two. Uh, we are currently in uh, Santa Barbara in an RV park. Like right next to the freeway. Literally, literally under the freeway. I can stick my hand out and hit a car. <laughs> but hey, it's Santa Barbara. There is no place to park, um, no RV parks other than the one we found. So <clears throat> the things we do, right? Um, please think about coming out tonight to Timbers Roadhouse. Uh, we have a huge contingent from Dos Pueblos, Dos Pueblos High School, DP. Uh, one of my very best friends is the uh, uh, kid counselor there. And he does a great job working with kids, working with underprivileged kids. Um, I have known him since my early days in college, which is a zillion years ago. His name is Scott. We call him New York because he had a thick accent because he was from New York. Um, him and a bunch of his friends and teachers are going to come out there. And every year he uh, organizes his friends to chip in to buy yearbooks for people who can't afford them. I, and I thought that was just the coolest idea ever. Um, they're like 100 bucks. And tonight at Timbers Roadhouse, we are going to be uh, selling Road to Ruta silver coins for a hundred bucks, and all the proceeds go to um, buying yearbooks for the uh, kids that can't afford them at DP Dos Pueblos High School. Uh, he's been there so long; it's crazy. He is a fixture there, and everybody loves him. He's saved more lives than anybody I know, literally, from destruction as uh, with teens with problems. Unbelievable man. And tonight we are going to celebrate DP, going to celebrate um, Silver, the celebrate that I, I have some huge news in cryptos. You might have heard already, but the U.S. government has pretty much given the stamp of approval to cryptos as long as they can control them. Now, we will be controlling the government. We will be calling them out on their bullshit. No more CFTC tamping down the price of anything we need free markets in america and this is the first step towards that even though they don't know it but what they did is gave the go-ahead for cryptos thank god all right let's talk about uh, that's well by the way tonight we started five meet and greet and we go till whenever whenever uh, so i hope to see you out there <clears throat> silver price uh, pulled back on the potential of a um a little break in the clouds in the war <clears throat> what what happened um Ukraine said, well, we maybe we won't be so adamant about uh, joining NATO. That was the whole problem in the first place. That's why Putin went in there. Said, I'm not going to let you guys join NATO. That's ridiculous um, because it puts you know missiles on their front, front doorstep. And no, we, we didn't let it happen down in Cuba. And Russia's not going to let it happen in Ukraine. So maybe that, hopefully, there'll be a peaceful conclusion. Uh, and that's the reason, quote, reason they said silver prices went down, which is bullshit. We know it. Um, it didn't go up. It didn't quadruple since, uh, you know, we started printing money in the 1980. How much money has been printed since 1980? And silver's still hanging out at one half the all-time high. Um, <clears throat> no, this is, I don't think this is the end of the war. I think uh, things will continue. This is an economic war. It's not necessarily countries invading other countries, although that's happening as well. Um, the derivative market is absolutely being destroyed right now. You don't, all the big players don't know whether to go short or long, and then there'll be these gigantic jumps, like in nickel. I heard it took out five of the largest traders in nickel uh, because they had short positions. Even though they had them hedged, they had, didn't have immediate access to their metal. And that's exactly what's happening in silver. Hang on to your silver with both hands. Get as much as you can if you don't have any. Oh, by the way, Miles Franklin is the sponsor of the uh, Freedom Roadshow. Send an email to Andy Sheckman, Andy, A-N-D-Y, at milesfranklin.com. Have him ship what he's got in inventory. Who knows how this shit's going to, how long the, the system's going to stay together. Literally. Uh, we are on the last last legs of the unbacked fiat monetary system. So make sure you get your silver. I do want to point out, silver's still massively hovering well above the 200-day moving average. Um, but who's going short now? Bank of America. 
Bank of America, the too big to fail bank, and they are in deep shit. Deep shit. Brian Moynihan, uh, Jenny and I did a a reading on him, and he is literally sweating, literally sweating, um, because they got snookered into putting this gigantic silver short position on, and now there's nowhere to go. Um, so they have to keep selling silver. All it does is drive the, the short position larger and larger. So good luck, Brian Moynihan. I hope you get what you deserve. How's that? Um, I would like to point out, again, that it is Private Advisor Group making another move on silver. They added 61 million shares in the fourth quarter. 61 million shares. They're the largest um, holder right now of uh, I, SLV, iShares Silver. That's a big deal. <clears throat> but I was concerned. I was concerned. I'm like, okay, if they do declare a force majeure, which will happen, by the way, on the comics, definitely, probably on the uh, on the uh, New York Stock Exchange as well, and the NASDAQ and all of them, uh, because of war, because of whatever. Um, that's their only way out. But I was checking out the prospectus of SLV to make sure to see what happens. If they close down SLV, are they going to dump the 600 million uh, or 590 million ounces of silver into the market? And the answer was no, they cannot dump the silver into the market. What happens is the shareholders can redeem. After that, they can dump. But if you're a shareholder of SLV, you'll be able to redeem your silver or let what's left of the silver after expenses to liquidate the fund. Um, and it's right here in the prospectus. Liquidation of the trust may occur at any time when the disposition of the trust silver will result in losses to investors in shares. The trust is designed to have a perpetual existence. However, if certain events occur at any time, the trustee will have to terminate the trust. That's basically anything they want. Uh, see, quote, description of shares and trust agreement, amendment and termination. For more information about the termination of the trust, including when events outside the control of the sponsor, that's the force majeure, the trustee or the shareholders may prompt the trust termination. Upon termination, now this is the important part, and this is, this is actually good for SLV holders, although I wouldn't hold anything in SLV, obviously, you know, it's not in your possession. Who knows if this contract will be upheld because it's in the possession of number one criminal, J.P. Morgan, who gave all their silver to Bank of America. And they're going to be just hanging on to the silver for dear life. Upon termination of this trust, the trustee will sell silver in the amount necessary to cover all expenses of liquidation and to pay any outstanding liabilities of the trust. We don't know what the trust is doing. Are they hedging silver? Uh, according to Goldman Sachs, they are which is probably against the prospectus. But if they're doing that, you could see the end of, like silver investors will get nothing back. Um, I don't know how, see that, that's the other thing. It might, we don't know the liabilities of the trust. The remaining silver, the, if there is any remaining silver, will be distributed amongst investors surrendering shares. Any silver remaining in the possession of the trustee after 90 days may be sold by the trustee and proceeds of the sale will be held by the trustee until claimed by remaining shareholders. <clears throat> Wait, let me read that again. Any silver remaining in the possession of the trustee. The remaining silver will be distributed amongst the surrendering shares. Okay, so you, see that's, it gets to, do you need 50,000 shares to surrender your shares? Most people just go for the cash. So what happens to that silver? See, I don't. I think that uh, I share silver is all um, has been leveraged and uh, messed with with derivatives because that's how criminal these people are. But we'll find out. Sales of silver in connection with the liquidation of the trust at any time of low prices will likely result in losses or adversely affect your gains. So it is not as clear as I originally thought when I read this. Um, you'll be able to surrender your shares for metal. But it's probably still the 50,000, um, you need 50,000 shares to do that now. Just, just get out of SLV and get yourself some real physical silver. I, I'm dead serious about this. Um, would a dump of the 590 million share uh, ounces of silver onto the market, would that destroy the price of silver forever? Um, no. Why do I say that? Because... That's about the average daily trading price on the comics. The price of silver is determined on the comics. 
So they might play games. Again, get your physical silver in your own possession. Stand back and watch the fireworks. Yes, they can put the price of silver to minus $40 an ounce. They did it with oil not too long ago. Remember, oil was minus $40. Now, what is it, $130 a barrel? That's the games these assholes play. We will not be free of them until the comic shuts down. And most likely, all these shares shut down. For example, as we see, Private Advisor Group holds 60 million shares at, in the fourth quarter of last, last year. But that's the thing. iShares didn't add 60 million ounces to their, to their total amount held. As a matter of fact, in September 29th of last year, it was the iShares uh, silver holdings were 595 million ounces. Now I think they're 590. So private advisor groups added 61 million, but the trust didn't do anything. Literally didn't do anything. So someone had to have sold 61 million, and, and you don't see that anywhere in the numbers. So this gets back to the share fraud. Shares of stocks and bonds are all rehypothecated, meaning they're, they're phantom trades. Private advisor group better take delivery of these 61 million. I think they're just adding to it. Remember, not too long ago, last year, one year ago today, they added 190 million shares, 190 million ounces. They owned one third of iShares SLV. These, these are the good guys. I think this quarter, they'll probably get up to 190 or 200. Now, the uh, prospectus also said if somebody gets over 70% of the shares, they can shut it down and take delivery of all that silver. So we'll see what happens. Don't mess. Don't even think about messing with shares and uh, exchanges and the, the NASDAQ's going down, the like down as to zero, no trades, because they trade all these fake shares, uh, especially the New York Stock Exchange. They're all fake. You look at the float versus how many shares are traded every day in milliseconds. It's insane. So that's how you get a company like Private Advisor Group buying 61 million shares from SLV, equating to 61 million ounces, and inventory doesn't change. That's fraud. That's uh, your friends over at BlackRock. Um, so keep that in mind. Okay. Um, Bitcoin surges as White House unveils crypto executive order. This is good. A lot of people saying, oh, you know, I don't know. We don't want, we don't want government in the cryptos. We do want, at least in this system, when it all breaks down, if the system breaks down, no, no one will trust these regulators at all. But before that, if we, if we do manage somehow to have a smooth transition, yes, the, the regulators need to be in there, but we need to hold the re regulators accountable. That's the key. They can't regulate Bitcoin around the world. Bitcoin, that's the beauty of Bitcoin is it's decentralized. But all these new crypto companies, Theta, for example, yes, regulation is good. Now that this is in place, maybe, just maybe, it's time for Theta to go on Coinbase and Kraken and Gemini. Can you imagine the move in, in Theta and Theta Fuel and T-Drop if this clears the way for them to be added to Coinbase? That's what, how many people in America? 300 and something million? 300 and something million having access to buy Theta in quantity to swap Bitcoin for Theta, Ethereum for Theta, Shina Ibu, Shina Nibu, whatever that ridiculous one is for Theta. You hear my wife laughing in the background? Shiba Inu, that's it. Shiba Inu. <laughs> hey, I own a little bit because my son talked me into it. It's gone down like 30% or whatever. I don't care. I was for fun. Um, but yeah, the beauty of Shiba Inu is it got tens of millions of people invested in cryptos. Isn't that amazing? All because of the Elon Musk tweet. I love it. And that, that is what's forcing these regulators to take crypto seriously. That's what's forcing the central bankers. The more people who learn, that's why we're on this road trip. The more people who learn about our criminal economic system, learn about the beauty of standalone assets, like silver, like gold, if you like gold, um, like cryptocurrencies. Are, absolutely, if they're in your own possession, no one's taking them unless they come at you with a gun. And now there's 40 million people in the United States of America who have invested in cryptocurrencies. Good luck trying to shut that off. 
good luck. All those idiots are saying, ah, the government's going to come and uh, shut down Bitcoin. No way. That's the dumbest thing ever. Sorry. <laughs> you got it wrong again. I love when people come at me who say, oh, Bix, you don't know what you're talking about. Crap about cryptos. I will, I will debate anybody in the world on cryptos. Anybody. Bring it. Because obviously, crypto investors are right. And they have been right the entire time. It's just that the people who argue against them, they, they didn't take the time to understand it or they're not smart enough to get it. And those who bought into cryptos, they had balls. Congratulations. Just hang on to them. You'll have your ups and downs and your the moonshot, I think, in cryptos will happen this year. And then it'll pull back again for a couple of years and then it'll go up again for a couple of years. It's being fully integrated into our economic system as evidenced by this uh, executive order. Now, those in the ultra conspiracy world that say Biden's executive orders are useless, they don't mean anything. Well, maybe, maybe so. But if this executive order is gone, then there's no regulation at all. And that's what a lot of the, uh, the truest want is no regulators. I, a world with no regulators means very lack of investment, which it should be. You shouldn't invest in risky shit. But the, the facade of regulators trying to trying to determine the winners and losers, these are people deciding these things. It's not good for America. It's not good for freedom. So I, I say no regulators, but if, they, if they're going to say this is a legit uh, presidency, then this is a legit executive order. And if this ex executive order is legit, then yeah, by all means, Coinbase add Theta now. And the Theta team, get, call up Coinbase and say, okay, it's time. The U.S. government just made it legit. <clears throat> and remember... Theta did not ICO. No ICO, so there shouldn't be any problems. Yeah, famous last word. Babe. Anyway, crypto's all caught a bid. Uh, Bitcoin's back up over $42,000. Congratulations, Bitcoin. Ethereum doing well at 27. Remember, there's nothing that Ethereum can do that Theta can't do better, faster, and cheaper. I'm not saying that Theta's the Ethereum killer because they don't want to be. They could be. They use the same uh, hash functionality. But they don't want to be. So keep keep a reminder: Tether is will be gone. Anybody using Tether, you deserve to lose your money um, because it is a fraud stablecoin. And that's one of the things they pointed out: is uh, checking on stablecoins. Uh, the government will be highly involved in stablecoins. So yeah, I I don't believe in stablecoins. It was a, a a fraudulent trading vehicle from the very start. Uh, Tether started by Brock Pearson, friends. Crypto Cabal, I call them. Um, but hey, it, it adds liquidity. Charlie Lee loves the liquidity. I, I'm not a fan of liquidity. I would rather have uh, true trades. You know, you've got some cash, you want to buy some Bitcoin, the trade is done. No derivatives attached. I mean, look at the volume of Bitcoin traded in the last 24 hours. $37 billion worth of Bitcoin. That's one uh, twentieth of all the Bitcoin traded hands. You didn't sell your Bitcoin. Who's selling this Bitcoin? Nobody. These are fake trades. Just like the stock market, just like the bond market, especially the fucking silver market. Keep that in mind. Um, truth is breaking out all over. Uh, New York Times reporter says ton of FBI informants were at uh, the January 6th rally and uh, calls traumatized fellow journalists bitches. <laughs> uh, bravo to Project Veritas for for exposing and, and this guy's saying there's there was fbi all over the place this was definitely a ff if you know what i mean anyway tonight we will be at the timbers roadhouse in santa barbara tomorrow or uh, saturday los angeles with bitcoin ben that starts at two o'clock in orange down in la county orange california at the tilted kilt you can get your tickets at road to and then click on roadshow come hang out the parties are fun uh, I'm gonna leave you with the. I'm gonna try to leave you with a little the intro that Josh just put together. We'll we'll put out some private road stuff on the show at Real and Brand, but uh, just a little taste of what was going on there at the Real and Brand. All right, this is Big Square. I'll talk to you. Later.